We all know what stress is. Your strength of materials textbook would say that it is an internal resistance to external force. This internal resistance is defined as force per unit area. To get a better picture, try to get a plastic bottle that's around you and try this yourself. I'm going to use this animated one. Now, if I try to poke this bottle, you will see that there is a small resistance to your push. This push that you feel on your finger is from the plastic bottle. This is kind of what stress is. It tries to encounter the force that my finger applies on that particular area. And that is why stress is represented as Newton per meter square. Now, in the world of mechanical and civil engineering, it is common to use the unit Newton per millimeter square. This is because stress values are typically very small when represented in Newton per meter square as one meter square is very large. And that is the reason why we use Newton per millimeter square. When you convert stress values from Newton per meter square to Newton per millimeter square, you need to multiply with one million. That's one followed by six zeros. This makes stress values in Newton per millimeter square more readable. Now, there are only two types of stresses that you need to remember. Normal stress and shear stress. Normal means perpendicular. So, if I have an object, normal stress would act perpendicular to the object at the point of load. The second type of stress is called shear stress. It is developed when the load acts parallel to a surface. A great example to demonstrate shear is to basically use a piece of cello tape and try sticking it on top of your arm. Let's just take a look at an animation to keep it simple. When you pull the cello tape, you pull the top layer of the skin, which pulls subsequent layers of skins, that is below the first layer. The process is painful, but is really helpful in understanding shear. Now, do not try this at home. All right, let's do a quick summary. If the force acts normal to the surface, it causes normal stress. And if the force acts parallel to the surface, it causes shear stress. But what happens when the load acts at an angle? The answer is very simple. You will have both normal and shear stresses being developed at the same time. We will be discussing more about this later. Now, while defining both normal and shear stress, we took examples where the load was applied on the boundary of the object. This makes a lot of sense because when you deal with any component, you apply load or torque on its exterior. So the idea of load getting applied on boundary or surface of an object should be fairly straightforward. However, a common misconception among students is to believe that stress develops only on the boundary or the surface. It is important to know that stresses are developed throughout the 3D object. You will not be able to see it unless you do some type of computer simulation where you can cut the 3D object and visualize the stress. All right, I think we have talked enough about stress. So let us move on to strain. Whenever there is stress, you will have deformation. In case of a water bottle, this was quite apparent. However, in case of metals, deformation is something that you cannot visualize very easily as it is typically very, very small. Now, there are cases like accidents where the metals get deformed a lot, but that's a different situation. Deformation is measured in millimeters. In the world of structural mechanics, we use strain which is unitless. Strain is change in length by original length. It's almost like calculating a percentage change, except for the multiplication with 100. Now, let us jump back to stress and talk about how they are classified. Stresses can be classified as uniaxial, biaxial, and triaxial. This classification depends on how you are simplifying the problem. In general, all real life problems are three dimensionals and you will have to consider triaxial stresses. The final classification of stress that we are going to talk about depends on what causes the stress. That is what type of load caused that stress. If you take a solid rod and try to elongate it by pulling it from one side, 
you will get normal stress on that plane if you try to apply a moment which is nothing but a force applied at a small distance then you will develop shear stress the final stress type is still normal or shear but you will hear alternative names such as compressive stress or tensile stress or even bending stress it is very important to understand what these different types of stresses mean all right i hope through this video you learned about the different types of stresses that are commonly calculated in engineering applications to summarize the primary classifications include normal and shear stress you could classify them as uniaxial biaxial and triaxial depending on the number of dimensions in which the loads act finally we could classify them based on the load itself such as compressive or bending stress once you have watched this video please finish the reading assignments and challenges you can find the links for the same under this video if you are watching this video on youtube consider enrolling into this course to gain full access to all the video assignments and projects thanks for watching bye